Okay, I don't like being wet. Dude, uh, just close your eyes. <laughs> and welcome back to another Linux Eatcast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Old Man Vin, joined by Jordan Swing, the man up north in Canada, and the man on the island, staying up late past his bedtime in Britannia, one Pedro Mateus, and together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us for him. Cocaine Voltron. You get it, two gains. Ha, it's a joke. <laughs> Pedro, tell me, more, tell me more about the um, Stadia controller that you're going to hold up. Pedro did like a super solid this week, and <laughs> I'm, I'm so pleased. I have some idea then like, question mark? Hey. <laughs> Stadia controller, yeah. No, I, I got one. Um, it was 25 pounds on eBay. So uh, not a bad deal considering the premiere version, which was the one I got, still shrink wrapped in with all the peelies and everything. Used to be a hundred and thirty dollars MSRP, so I'll take it. Uh, mini review, I guess it is heavy, a lot heavier than it would imply. It's a lot smaller than it looked like when I only saw it on people holding it on the internet. Uh, it's very smooth. Uh, over if you just plug it in and use it with a cable, it's great. It's an awesome controller. If you uh, try to use it in Bluetooth mode, it drops inputs like a motherfucker. It is really, really unreliable over Bluetooth. It just drops button presses whenever it feels like it. It, yeah. Google needs to fix that, please. Did you switch <laughs> it back to Wi-Fi with that with that guy's thing? No, no, no. Uh, it. I, I'll leave it in Bluetooth because hey, it works. It doesn't automatically connect. That's the other thing. You need to go into the Bluetooth uh, like pair devices and manually connect it because it does not automatically connect the first time. Mm. Kind of, yeah, a little weird. <laughs> Have you um, run over it yet? Uh, no. <laughs> but yeah, no, I can totally see uh, why uh, it survived Ben Heck running over his. Uh, it is uh, it it is sturdy and it feels very smooth. You can't really feel the seams all that much, unlike literally all of the other controllers that I have. Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> I I was watching this and I'm like, oh my! <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, you know, you know, I was expecting it to like, but you know, to to its credit, no, uh, the only thing that flex. broke was like the left analog stick. That was the only one that didn't work anymore. Everything else was still working. Yeah, I watched. So uh, they're sturdy. <laughs> I wasn't terribly interested in the Stadia controller by any means, and I watched Ben Heck do a teardown. And he's like. This thing is so incredibly over-engineered, it's laughable. He's like, I bet I could run this thing. Oh, and it just immediately cuts to his driveway where he's driving over <laughs> in his car. And um, For science. If you want a controller that, like, there's probably $40, $50 worth of materials in that. Yeah. It is a, like, you can tell it just, the moment you pick it up, it's like, okay, this is, for me it was, oh, this is smaller. Oh, this is heavy. Okay, mm -hmm. it's heavier than the dual sense. So as, as yeah. just like a wired controller though, how is it? As a wired controller, it's really good. A little the uh, D pad is really really clicky. Bye. <gasps> Bye. You, like, like, a little <laughs> bit like that, yeah. Click 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 all the way to the floor. The D pad's real clicky. It is. Is uh, it territorial? Did it just like shuffle when your other controllers? Off? No, I, I knocked the uh, vapo thingy <laughs> as I reached for the controller. Okay. <laughs> Pick that up. So, Jordan, what's there. new with you, man? You got that desk in, you got file cabinets, you got panda heads, and uh, wall for TV. Just waiting to happen, man. Yeah, I guess. I, guess. I, I got a new desk. It got delivered on Tuesday. I had to disassemble this fucker to bring it downstairs, but it's it's set up. I'm, I have the old desk back there. So, and, like, your, yeah, your, new, your new desk was delivered. It, it, it was... One of your friends had it, right? Like, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Was a, 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 a buddy of mine was closing, was like uh, packing up an office, and they're like, "Hey, we got this desk. It's perfectly fine. It's decent. So, if you want it, yeah, so take a look at that." And it, so it did show up pre-assembled. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's it's uh, it it was in two pieces. Okay, but like uh, the stairway going down into this room is this is what super I wanted to ask narrow. because I yeah. I'm very right. guilty of uh, I've done this <laughs> yeah. on multiple occasions in different places around the world uh where you put something together in the like four year or like the main room and you're like yeah type to oh geez yeah yeah no right? in, in in your mind it's like no this will fit perfectly 100 oh, no problem yeah it's like uh, uh, and, and it's like 
half an inch like uh, just off of tolerance too uh, and you're like well time to and of course that one piece you need to split it in two requires taking everything dude i had to take the back off so like the there was there it was just like a long piece with the drawer mm-hmm. bringing that da- that downstairs was a nightmare because it's not stable so it's like wobbling and i'm like oh, oh god oh, screw oh. stay stay in your holes do it, do it, do it, <laughs> daddy, daddy needs you yeah mm-hmm. so uh but you know, it it got it got done. I got everything rewired. I'm you know I, I'm glad like all the angles and shit worked out because I was really stressing out about that all week. So hey, oh, it works. Hey, I'm glad everything worked out. I was um I spent like the first two hours like I came like screeching, landing the plane and flaps up. You know, no gear down. Um, calling these guys up for the pre pre super shows and troubleshooting like a weird audio crackling problem. Which sometimes you just get convinced that you know what maybe there just positively is a higher power and it really enjoys cranking one out when you're suffering like that is like a highlight like every four or five years it's like a vulcan right it only wants to do it like every seven years but when it does it's fears i'm like why what is this problem it's because i'm doing a thing on uh, sundays come Sub- check it out tomorrow Sundays, subterfuge uh come watch me edit this show i'll be doing it on saturday sunday yes sunday or monday depending on when you're at hmm that's also a possibility yeah <laughs> I'll be there Mondays. live answering your questions. Uh, you'll get a notification. Subscribe on our YouTube channel or just keep an eye out in our Discord. That'll be going down. A couple of things went out this week. I got the podcasting on Linux. That is up. That is posted. I think it's even public right now. If you want to head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. If you want to learn how to install Reaper. If you want to make your own Linux Gamecast, I'll give you all the files you need. The three of us talking without any processing so you can follow along and make your own Linux gaming podcast but it will get you the nuts and the bolts what you need to get pointed in the red just enough to be dangerous that's what we're looking for <laughs> that's what i want to arm you with and uh outside Make of the that, chipmunk version <laughs> yeah i can but it you'll get i try and really what i want to do is condense everything just once you get the signal flow jordan you'll attest to that once you understand the signal flow like what you're creating you're like i'm building a digital channel strip this has got to go through these and this has got to go over here then that's got to get distributed over there and you got to understand what gain staging is mm-hmm. once you get that locked in you can go a lot of interesting places also track media 2020 we tried that last night worked out pretty good okay very nice I, I, you you posted some video for a fix for it or something uh, yeah there was uh one of those uh ubisoft just being the most ubis in 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 the most Ubi of Ubisoft moves the day before this game launches, Ubisoft just cocks up their launcher. They make, they make an API change where it just breaks everything and Strider's like, oh, it's all broken on Lutris 2 and it was broken on Steam and Proton. It was just shattered. Screw Ubisoft, baby. Uh, yeah. So, you know, Valve managed to get a hot fix in Proton Experimental, which you had to add, but then it worked its way into Proton Next. Then it worked its way into uh, Proton um, 7. We'll be talking about yeah. it in a moment. <laughs> Dash 6. But, I mean, it works. It's fine. It's game. Go try it out if you want. Um, yeah, Trackmania. Uh, I don't think many people in the uh, States even know what a Trackmania is, but it's a popular game in the rest of the world. So, check it out if you get a chance. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom. Yeah, like the horse is full of zoom, zoom. I mean, the horse has been temporarily, temporarily replaced by the creepy kid from those Mazda commercials, and he's, <laughs> he's staring at me. I, I, I don't like it. It's the Steam Linux Update. Oh. Show us your PowerPoint, Slager. No, no PowerPoints. But we do have a new proper steam release it's the big big roundup of all the uh betas that we've had up to now and yeah if you look at the release list it's a big chunker uh there's the new big picture which is now the default uh it over here on the um rx 6700 xt it works pretty much as expected now at least as far as i can compare to the steam valve we need to have words because this is clearly <laughs> the type of small update forge slash patch. What type? What do you think it looks like, Pedro, when the type says big chunker? <laughs> Large I have no chungus. idea. I've never seen it. They're always small updates. <laughs> you, you know, Val, Val, someone started an initiative to like re, revamp your, your announcement names. Include things like chungus and just a little guy for us. <laughs> teeny tiny little one dude okay uh, well yeah. we talk about like launchers and stuff like that last week right uh well mm. we brought that up like we 
get somebody, I don't care. Like I, I will take a year off the show valve, hire me for one year and give me a phone number with an email address so I can get a hold of every single company that has a launcher and be like, Hey, those are going away. Okay. Because, uh, at the best case scenario, a launcher for your game breaks even the other 99% of the time, it's a net negative for the customer. It's a bad Everyone experience, hates it. yeah. right? Best case scenario. <laughs> It doesn't completely piss you off. Sorry, Pedro. I just needed to say that. Fuck no, it, it, I, I fully agree with that sentiment. Uh, the uh, the other thing that they fixed specifically for Linux, uh, which we brought it up at the time when they fixed it uh, in the beta, was the screenshot noise, the little shutter noise that uh, when you press F12. Yeah, that was crashing. <laughs> that was causing uh, the entire Steam overlay to crash whenever you took a screenshot. That's now been fixed, so mm. good on them. And uh, yeah, no, the Steam input side was, other than big picture mode, was the other big section. Because, yeah, Steam Deck, it also very, very important. So there's a buttload of uh, Steam input fixes and new stuff. Check it out. <laughs> I saw the um, thing that got my attention. Like, okay, we're, we're going to have like the default, the new big picture is on by default i'm like oh i guess they finally got that sorted out okay <laughs> oh, over here and i'm uh, i'm on team green with my 3060 i'm like let's try this thing out i don't ever ever use big picture in here in the studio but i'm like hey i like play when you stuff i hit that jordan's flying it's still a slideshow baby oh it, it fucking eats shit it was, it was no good yeah so if you're on team green you gotta slap that dash old big picture mode to your uh or just old big picture to your uh, Steam Launcher shortcut. Otherwise, it's, you're going to be having a bad time. I would love to use the new Steam big picture mode, but it's like, yeah, it's com completely not usable. Every time I'll just like accident. Because like uh, the Steam browser is actually convenient for getting to the curator page. So I end up using that a lot in the old big picture mode. Mm. But uh, yeah, these, these, these days, the, the new one, no bueno, would, would like to see some NVIDIA fixes. Please, please and thank you, Valve. Pedro, over there on um, Team Red, how's the uh, big picture thing running? It's fine. Uh, it is pretty much the same experience on the Steam Deck and on the desktop now, even at 2560 by 1440. It is, I mean, it still chugs because whenever I load <laughs> into the library, I have like 1600 something games. So it has a little brown moment as it's loading, but then it clears up and it's smooth. <laughs> so for the other 98% of the market, um, it's still a better off. <laughs> well, 70%, yeah. but yeah, go on. <laughs> well, when, when, one day you'll have some market segment, at least you're not on an Intel <laughs> GPU, but we'll, we'll, we'll get to that. Um, experiments. We got we to talk about new experiments that Valve is performing on us. Every time I see these, these remind me of like old Mystery Science Theater episodes. But we got that, um, we got the experiment hub. In the the not too distant future. La, la, la. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, Steam Labs experiments, uh, they are playing around with new stuff to see how they can sell you more things. Extract and, more hey, money from your peasant house. Yeah. Hey, yeah. do you want to pay more? <laughs> speaking of, you want to pay more money for stuff you already own? Well, experiment number 15 got you. It is a custom. Dude, you got to appreciate oh. Valve, though, because Valve has so much. They have fucked their money. At this point, they're doing it because they feel like it. They don't have to. You you, yeah. you gotta you gotta wonder like someone someone is driving these. I guess these are like the um because we were talking about the stack ranking thing. I guess these experiments are a great way to like get your your ranking up if you're gonna be leading these, mm. especially if one gets uh, one gets adopted. Yeah, if it does but, yeah. well, and it gets implemented. Yeah, okay. yeah but uh, this, this 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 is a hub you can check it out uh, slash DLC for you, and you know it shows you all your games and the DLC that's available. Uh, Pedro, I suspected a lot of them were soundtracks, but uh, I think you confirmed that. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> if I look at my uh, page for, it's like, oh, you have uh, 1,391 games in your library, 636 DLCs in your library, and you have 2,562 DLCs available to buy. And I start scrolling down. It's like, oh, the Telos Principle soundtrack, uh, some stuff for Cursed Fode. Oh, there we go. Uh, Strafe Gold Edition soundtrack, Victor Vrent, uh, ARPG soundtrack. Yeah, okay. Uh soundtracks. That that that's a thing. I had a look, you know, you log in and it shows you right there at the top. And I'm like, okay, four hundred and eight pieces of DLC out of um no, no. Uh yeah. Four hundred and eight and two thousand pieces of DLC available. And this is like I I have almost a thousand games. 
three twenty two out of eleven ninety nine. So yeah, you immediately have to default to like soundtracks DLC that was included with the initial purchase, and because uh, I could probably count every bit of DLC uh, that I purchased on one hand. I'm just not a person who buys a lot of DLC. Yeah, you usually usually you end up getting it with like the uh, with like the complete edition, especially, right. especially uh, for um, like when we were still uh, getting like regular feral releases. You get Life is Stranger, or whatever. The game of the year, and, old yeah, yeah, and you platinum. got you got everything. So Clothes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, like I I don't know. Like there's there's a couple of DLC in my list. I might get like the Salasta expansions at least come with um, like new classes and shit. So it's like new gameplay options. Uh, but yeah, I don't I don't know. Everything else is like soundtrack or cosmetic stuff. Borderlands. Oh yeah, Bor- Borderlands has a bunch of missions. Those are all twenty dollars. Holy shit! Payday Ugh. two. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's Borderlands. What, what, what are some really egregious ones? Like, I know a lot of like the train simulators. Train simulator. Like that, but but um... like th- that that entire thing is DLC. You only buy like the shit that you yeah, actually right. want. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> it's like build a bear, build your own thing. Proton seven oh six is out. It's amazing. You can finally play. Yes, that's right. Prepare yourself, Gotham Knights. I remember that that came out that was a oh, game yeah. wasn't it yeah it came out about a year ago hey, oh, hey, I'm, hey. I'm real excited for mahjong ladies, mahjong ladies. <laughs> that that's the thing that's also uh this is in the now playable uh crazy machines Ninin days two heroes in the dark uncharted like see thieves collection yep. people like the uncharted that's mm-hmm. very good uh, you can finally play it without using uh proton g so for you know less linux inclined deck players that's very good mm. we, we got some sony stuff sackboy uh spyro Spiros. A couple of updates they did. Uh, oh, man, Project Cars. Oh, I hope all of them died. <laughs> update Still Y-Mono. Still not touching them. DXVK has been updated, and this will fix, should fix, probably will fix uh, your Ubisoft launcher woes that you might have noticed earlier this week when and none the, of your um, Ubisoft games will launch. Yeah, same for the EA Origin mini launcher that was causing issues for some people. Mm-hmm. That should oh, be boy. fixed now, too. The, the other thing in this release, there's so many flights, Microsoft flights and fixes, just like there's, there's an entire section of like flights and flights yeah. and flights and flights. <laughs> and, um, also, I totally misread Super House of the of Dead Ninjas as Super House of the Dead Ninjas. And I was very, very <laughs> sad when I wasn't met for a store page for a railgun shooter typing tutor featuring zombie ninjas. A couple of things I do. OK, here's another thing. They've also fixed the new EA launcher displaying a blank window. Mm-hmm. Uh, again, Val, let me do this. Give me 360 oh. <laughs> days. I'll, I'll take care of this. Um, Marvel Snap, huh? Snap. Mm. Oh, Snap. Yeah. The, they forgot about that a week after it came out. They fixed yeah. Quake 3 Arena and Quake 3 Team Arena displaying weird textures like because people are still playing Quake 3 Arena. Yeah. <laughs> As it turns out, that, that was a fairly uh, popular game back in its day, and a lot of people really liked it. For a lot of people, it's their game. They turn on the For computer. a lot of people, Pedro, it was the only, like, we didn't understand at that time on Linux. Like, we just, because Loki had just really rolled out in force. It was, like, at the peak of, and, of course, when it, the Quake beta, Quake 3 Arena, of course we're going to get a Linux demo, and of course we did. We're like, oh, shit, yeah, we, we're just going to get AAA, you know, all the big titles now on <laughs> Linux from then. Neverwinter Nights came out on yes. Linux in 2003, and I'm like, ooh, you just, ooh, just, we could uh, actually, you know, use hey this man, properly. This this <laughs> has been a weird one because then it all came, it, it, it has all happened before, and hopefully it will never happen again. But thank you, Valve. Thing that caught my eye, um, I've seen a couple of people play this, uh, but I'm more interested in this, Pedro, because it was. Uh, a stealth drop in 2023 that you're about to tell us. Yeah, so. a stealth drop by someone you wouldn't entirely expect when you think of spectacle fighters, uh, like anime styley type of characters. You think, oh, your Capcoms, even your Konamis, uh, something more towards the Japanese side of the industry. Bethesda. We're talking about Bethesda, who published a game called Hi Fi Rush. Uh, which is, think if you think like, um, what was it? The uh, No More Heroes, um, uh, Hero is, Hero is Dead? The, the no, 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 no games. More Heroes was the, uh, yeah, that, that was the one. Yeah, that, the, that, basically that one had the, you swing a Wiimote around. Yep, the, the Suda 5-1 um, type of um, 
the spectacle fighters. It is very much that, but with an extra dose of uh, cell shading. It looks all right. <laughs> what really, <laughs> what really threw me off is like, oh, this is published by Bethesda. What? <laughs> what that, where did that come from? <laughs> Well, I mean, they they needed something in that category, though, didn't they? Of rhythm based, not Fighting devil make rays, I guess. Uh, did they? Because I think this is the first. <laughs> well, uh, I, I I mean, here here here's here's the thing. Like this this is I'm I'm just glad that Bethesda Killers is. Thank like, you. Oh, well, I mean, they're they're, <laughs> they're publishing it. They're too busy working on the latest edition of Skyrim. But you know, Tango Game War, Games work. They yeah, I guess Starfield. No, it's <laughs> no. You're you're gonna boot up Starfield. It's like ah, you're awake. Good. And then and then the dragon attacks. Watch them fucking do that. I swear to God. Um, I've watched a couple of streamers play this, and they, they were definitely having a good time. No, Rhythm Games, is, admittedly, I saw that. I'm like, hey, I don't, I don't, I don't mm. you know, I'm good. I'm good. But, you know, this is made by Tango Gameworks. You might yes. know them from little games like The Evil Within and mm. The Evil Within 2 and a little game called Ghostwire Tokyo. That, that one out. looked cool, but, like, yeah, that one kind of didn't land at all. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's completely designed, developed, and uh, put together by a Japanese development company. Like, Bethesda just, like, yeah, showed up with a, yeah, yeah. With a check. And they're like, here. Uh, so, yeah, I, 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 I like I, it. I, I like how it looks. I like the mechanics. I like everything. But I was like, is there a way to just cut off the core mechanic, the rhythm thing, and just let me go Devil May Cry and just smash it up, and I'll be happy? <laughs> But then you have Devil May Cry. I'm a simple creature, Pedro. I, you, you, want, you, want, you want not Devil May Cry, and he doesn't want to pay five hundred dollars for a Switch. I I hmm. get the whole not wanting to do the rhythm thing. That's why I still haven't bought um, Metal Hellsinger because that game, yeah, it's a metal boober shooter. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, boober shooter with a metal soundtrack that oh. you have to shoot and swing swords and whatnot in. You know, with the rhythm the of the rhythm. music in order to get your multipliers and your damage and everything. See, I only have experience with, um, maybe like you guys, with Crypto the ne Necrodancer, right? Yep. And like, you know, you got to fight with a dunch, dunch, dunch. Mm -hmm. But then again, it was like oons and wubs and stuff like that, which, you know, that just that, puts that you was... in like a natural, like, stabby motion anyway. So it's pretty easy. Yeah, no, that, that, that was more uh, of a dude. minion manager, though, for sure. If you listen to the uh, the soundtrack on YouTube, it it it's not bad. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, but going back to the the stealth launch for a second, I think like yeah, you you can do something like that with with a new IP like this, but like I don't know for Elder Scrolls Six or Halo, how though, Jordan. How do you get like on the in yeah, the, the modern you, internet, like all the social media, all the people working on this, uh, like and NDA NDA the fuck out of them. They're highly they, okay. I, that's why I looked up Tango Game Works. There's 65 employees. Yep. But, yeah, 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 even if they Japanese. told their families there there wouldn't be yeah. probably a lot of dissemination yeah and, and like oh you're working on a new rhythm game who the fuck cares right like <laughs> yeah. like yeah it, alex it, like, you're still there <laughs> I, in no way am i going to downplay the ability to self drop a game of this size this caliber and this completion level because like by all accounts this is a triple a game like and when it, that's the thing it, even the publisher being under scrutiny because yes starfield uh, is coming up and a lot of people are looking at everything that Bethesda does. So, yeah. It, how did that happen? <laughs> and I think this is on Game Pass, too. Yeah. Uh, I, th th they're not doing, like, too much heavy announcements of stuff on Game Pass. I think they're just relying on people discovering it. Pleasant like, surprises like Daddy this. Big Microsoft. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh, Valve, when, when, when are we going to get Steam Pass? Game Pass. Dude, they would make so much money. <laughs> I mean, think about how quickly you could uh, trade that Netflix account for a Steam Pass yeah. account, right? Just yeah, just, give me the, you uh, just gotta make sure you log in on your home Wi-Fi once a month. Oh, I'm pound. sorry. We, mis <laughs> we mistakenly released that. Do We're you, not actually okay, doing no, that. Hang oh. on. Here, here's the problem with that. Yeah, they, they said you need to make sure that you're at your home once a month. And I was like, do you know how many college kids, how many parents were like, oh, we're going to see Johnny at least once a month from now on because he's got to come home to reset yeah. the home. Um, <laughs> to log into Netflix. Or he just... Drives the car into the driveway. Yeah. Now I got no, Wi-Fi now. Like, Log in. You, you I mean, drives Netflix, <laughs> you'd given so much hope to university parents uh, that they were going to see their wee babies again, and you ripped it back away from them, you monsters. <laughs> yeah. Awful, awful, awful creatures. Shame. All right. Well, speaking speaking of exorbitantly high prices, coming up next, AMD. I mean, uh, speaking of uh, removing breasts, there's also the band Keen. 
heavy breathing. <laughs> Go listen to any of their songs. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Did you say removing breasts? Like breaths. Okay, okay. I, I was like, why is he talking about a mammosect or a mastectomy? Like, yeah. I, I like know. my breasts where they are. Thank you very much. Do not touch my moobs. Uh, <laughs> Shut up, man. If you wait, listen, if you're gonna bring up chicken booba, I've, I've got to take a look at some recipes. Uh, God damn I mean, it! Now, I, now I want some breaded chicken, chicken breasts. Oh, are man, yeah. I got I got baited hard. I got baited hard. Everybody on the right side, I'd scrolled up just enough to see where it says vitamin C, and I'm like, really? No, <laughs> no. Dick move, dick move. Google. I was like, man, I thought I was gonna have one of those new things to talk well, about. Well. You won't Here the vitamin C contents in chicken. Run. If if you want to buy us some chicken or some vitamin C supplements, because we have the scurvy, head on over to patreon.com chicken slash Linus Gamecast. Yeah, Linux scurvy cast. Um <laughs> Vitamin yeah, Chicken. Sign so, so, sign up. Uh get access to our Discord where you can talk to us about the health benefits of daily chicken injections, uh, where they're the other six days of the week. You can also get in there by subbing to us on Twitch here, twitch.tv slash Linux Gamecast. Yeah. Oh God, I'm dying. <laughs> we got, we we got, we got all, we got all sorts of uh, stuff. In, we got, uh, we got uh, early access. To- You're welcome, Mother <laughs> <laughs> We 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 got uh, we got access to the show notes. We got access to. You can buy your way on the damn show. Oh, you. we got access to all that, but you can get it as well by supporting yes. us on yeah. Patreon.com. Yes, that's what we're talking about here. <laughs> oh no, uh, uh-uh, man, I, I like the idea of like support us, and we still keep the access. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. we'll, we'll we'll wave it in front of you so you can see it, but we'll deny it to you. Anyways. We will email you uh, photos, like in black. And yeah, white. E- email like you ransom. photos of our of our Discord randomly. Right. <laughs> yeah, uh, we we got we got we got a store store.lnxgamecast.com. Buy some merch, put it on your body, drink some fluids at it out of it. Yeah, you know, if you fill that shirt full of water, drink it. It's good. Uh, put that coffee cup over your body. It's fine. Slap some stickers. <laughs> Jordan's on... face is hydrophobic. <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm not hydrophobic. It just makes me a little uncomfortable. Okay. I don't like being wet. Dude, uh, just close your eyes. <laughs> don't, don't, don't waterboard me, Ben. I don't, I don't want, um, what you can't see will hurt you. No, uh, what, what I can't breathe can though. <laughs> We we got we got uh, we got wish zones as well. LinuxGameCast.com. Put your mouse over the support button. I got one. Pedro has one. Ven has one. Jill has one. I need keyboards and power bars. Because... Look at you over here adulting and shit. Um, yeah, fat right. Plug extension cord, fifteen feet and ton power. Yeah, I, I need I need I need one with like a fucking long ass cable. That's my problem. You fucking punks, man! You got extension cords, rice cookers, and shit like <laughs> air that. Air fryers, but close enough. <laughs> I mean, you you can try to cook rice in an air fryer. <laughs> See, I, this is why I need this. Ep- okay, I, I need the Epic CPU, and I need uh, this to cook rice with a uh, forty ninety <laughs> water cooled. Well, you know, you know, if you take the cooling plate off, it probably could boil some water. It gets hot enough. God, here's the sad thing. This is why. This is why. This is is my eternal torture. I'm like, then you know, you can print money, right? I'm like, what's that other Vin? I'm like, you buy that and you build a uh, CNC uh, water thing for it, and we cook uh, rice with a forty. Yeah, no, yeah, no. You 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 just gotta. You just got to play Lost Ark while you're doing it. And yeah, oh, you'll, you make you'll a really up. big vapor chamber and just throw yeah, in the rice. And we make, there. Rice and we make <laughs> yeah, a YouTube yeah. video of cooking rice. Hi, Lightus. I look forward to watching yet another video. Um, Man. Like, <laughs> now, now, I, now I just want chicken and rice. You fuckers are making me fuck 40 90 cooked rice. We thank you for your support. We got to think com forward slash Linux team yes. Yeah, 37 month resub on the Twitches. And North Ranger as well for a nine month resub just now. <laughs> Super tight. Uh, you can give birth to a North Ranger now. Yeah. On Tuesdays <laughs> and Fridays we do uh, Filthy Casuals Trek Mania. We're doing that. Come play. Jordan does Borderlands on Thursdays and uh, Sundays. I'll be around if you have any Linuxy flavored questions on the YouTube's editing. What you're watching right here tomorrow will probably be a very entertaining one. So, can you cook chicken on an AMD GPU? Hmm. Oh, can I boil chicken? <laughs> that, I, I guess, I guess that's the real question. <laughs> I wonder what size of like a hot plate. I, I mean, you need you at least need to get the XTX if hot plate. If you fillet right? that's it or just you, you know take bucks. out the breasts and do it like bit by bit, you can probably do it. Yeah. Well, this is what I'm thinking because now I'm thinking about like the uh, the 4090 <laughs> gets hot enough to uh, justify such a crazy cooler. We could probably make a nice little uh, like. 
like uh like kebab not kebab camping what are we like, like, <laughs> convection oven PC? something yeah. no 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 hibachi <laughs> yeah like a, oh like an open air barbecue <laughs> like a charcoal yeah yeah come on yeah let's live you want, you want, <laughs> yeah, uh, invite Jensen. You know, serve, serve him some steaks. Like, yeah, we cook this on you. He'll, he'll just show up with a crate. Do you full have of spatulas? enough spatulas, though? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, the Nvidia spatula. That's enough. That's enough talking about Nvidia. We need Team Red because you know they got our back through the whole time. Team Green's been messing around, like fucking us over with the high prices and like trying to screw us, trying to pinch us. You know, not putting out the supplies, only selling their cards to crypto bros and like nvidia's just not taking care of so we've had to like hey amd amd's like don't worry fam we got you because we we care about you as the individual as the customer you're important to us and that's why we're gonna undership uh, chips to balance cpu gpu supply so we can make more money off you fuckos lol well, uh, you, you, you love how they, they're like well you know we're not the only ones doing it it still doesn't make it better <laughs> you guys a- yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we, we have this great situation now where um, the, the new chips aren't uh, selling fast enough. The old stock isn't moving. And normally, you know, we'd, ha- we'd see that old stock lower in price and people would grab it up. That, that's, that's not happening these days. Dude, the you, demand you, you just got the right take on the um, there's been an update. AMD's VP of communications reached out with the following clarification. He's like, yeah, yeah well, what you said, but worded differently. Uh, yeah. the, the bit where he says, uh, the idea that we are doing this to keep prices quote-unquote elevated isn't accurate. Nah, it just so happens to be a happy little coincidence, I'm sure. Happy little coincidence. We had no choice. <laughs> Look, nine ninety nine guys, come on. Listen, we are here to help. We're AMD. We, we're the savior. Um, You know what? The dry times are just over, man. Things are... Uh, attempting to return to normal-ish, and like, shit like this is getting in the way. Now, Really what this is about, all joking aside, is because we are headed in there, we're already in a recession. Uh, the partners, you know, AIB partners, they don't want to be sitting on a lot of stock. And they sure as fuck don't want to be sitting on a lot of stock when your value proposition card is 999. Is that better NVIDIA? Yes, it is, but it's still 999. You're going to be moving volumes of these. And, you know, people are not going to be buying $999 CPUs right now or gpus i should say during a recession so it's gonna be like six hundred dollar cpus though for like the top end that's still it's still very expensive people don't want 650 700 yeah yeah, like yeah. right now nobody wants to buy anything they're just like we're just, we're just you know what we've learned over the past three years what good enough means mm-hmm. hey, hey there's the intel card <laughs> the the intel 750 is now 250 bucks that's like that's dirt cheap Mm. Yeah, you need a, a you need a video card thirty sixty type of performance yeah. situation. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, I that that's just how it rolls. Like you know, AMD is not going to overproduce when they can. You know, AMD doesn't want to have stock. You know, oh, we could get into the supply line, um, but the whole just in time, you know, making what needs to be made when it needs to be made. You know, it's a good way to keep your costs low. Where you're not sitting a lot of inventory yourself, but you know the uh, EIBs don't want to be sitting in a lot of inventory either, especially if they can't ship it. So, well, the uh, GIT demands a constant flow of product. Once that, uh, and stops, we see what, what, what yeah. happens when there's a blip in that system. Yeah, yeah, three years <laughs> in, and we're like, we're starting to get. But what are we doing? Like the smart little insect ants we are, we're rebuilding the exact same thing. No, no, we don't make it more fault tolerant. That's nope. that, uh, that'll cost more money nope. than uh-huh. the billions we lost from. We're, we're gonna put the ant, ant mountain just like we had it, Jordan. So we don't have to worry about it. <laughs> I mean, it's not gonna happen twice. It's, heroic. It, it's the law, Trafalgar law. Yeah, heroic. They're back. They're they're churning out stuff at a pretty good rate. They have a new version out two six zero. They got a brand new steel blue or brand new theme blue steel or sorry uh, midnight mirage. Uh, there's also a couple bug fixes like. Uh, for now, if you set a wine version for a game and it's not there, i.e. it got removed by a system upgrade, you're clearing out old GE versions because they're two gigs a pop, it'll search your system for existing wine installs and say like, hey, do you want to use one of these instead? Which is always nice. Makes things a little easier, especially when you haven't come when you haven't launched a game in a while. Yep. And uh, they also fixed uh, the GOG installs because I actually tried that with the... <laughs> I tried uh, Heroic to pull... A oh, bunch of my uh, gawk my games down, dog. and of the Relax. seven that I installed, <laughs> three worked out of the box. So it was almost uh, half, but yeah, no, 
even other games that just work as I then went to the Lutris website to look up the install scripts, they don't need anything special. So something funky was going on with the, the way Heroic handles GOG installs. Very good. That That's a good fix. Good job. Yeah, yeah they uh, bring that up under the known issues, right? Um, it's in the fixes there. Fixes and improvements on GOG game setup and installation. Mm, we just found out that Heroic is not creating the folders. And also, uh, those of you on Windows RT tablets, Windows ARM 64 builds are finally yep. available. Your long <laughs> national nightmare is over. Finally. Our long... I, I mean, like, honestly, like, considering Heroic started, like, a year ago, it still looks real good. Like, oh, it does, and it people on Windows are using it over the default uh, Epic Games launcher because Epic's is a bit shit. So. Well, I mean, I even saw that <laughs> meme today on a PC or PC Master Race. It was like, you know, new 16 core CPU, 32 gigs of RAM done, and it did the victory dance. It's like Epic uh, launcher now opens in under three minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nice. Like, how do you make something that does that little of nothing take so long? Uh, hmm. it, it's all you know the ten cent data harvesting. Hey man, listen <laughs> that that shopping cart. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> that shopping cart's like four gigs of RAM by itself. <laughs> Oof. Well, hopefully it's not GPU bound, right? Hopefully not. But you know, if, hey. if it is, there there's uh, there's some uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, so this is from uh, Mike Blumenkrant, supergoodcode.com, links to all of this stuff in our show Always notes. a fun read. Oh, yeah, the, you, you, you know that shit's going to get whack. So, yeah, it turns out that the NVIDIA driver can do fast linking pipelines for Vulkan in about 0.02 milliseconds, and, oh, oh, like, he took some exception to that and documented his long, long quest to bring down fast link pipelining, pipeline compilation times uh, with a 50,000% improvement uh, in Zinc and in Dota 2, which is going to be really good. Uh, for the Rad V driver. For the, for, <laughs> yes, for the, for the Rad V driver. I think I did mention that, the AMD driver. Um, but yeah, uh, this is really good because if you've been on Team Red or if you've dabbled in there, OpenGL is still a bit of a shit show. Mesa has gotten a lot better. This but is the performance fine. Is, uh, is, <laughs> is, not, is not quite there. But, you know, Zinc, OpenGL on Vulcan gets that all... I uh, guess that performing about as fast as native and probably a little faster because it's taking advantage of all of your CPUs where OpenGL was very, very threaded. Um, there's also at the very, very end, if you want to improve fast uh, linking pipelines in your own drivers, uh, he has a couple steps in order to do that. Where are they? I should have written them down. Uh, but it's stuff like uh, don't don't cache the pipelines, do a bunch of pre-flight checks to like not uh, to stop. All right, all right, all right this. Ensure you're not compa- compiling any shaders at link time. Ensure you're not creating any shaders at link time. Avoid adding fast link pipelines to any sort of shader cache and provide your fast link pipeline creation. So we've been talking about this, or I've been talking about for this for a bit. What does it actually do? You know those uh, shader compile times, you know, the stuttery bit where you got to like walk around in circles when you start up a game in Proton? Yeah, this you gets rid of that. You mean even after I've downloaded the pre-compiled shaders? Yeah, this mm-hmm. uh-huh. gets rid of that. Oh. So uh, that's, that's going to be real nice. Yeah, uh, there was, uh, if you've ever used uh, DXVK async with Proton GE, that was sort of the workaround for those like initial hitches or the full two to three second uh, freezes. And then the game would resume. It's just long enough that your brain goes, that crashed. No, no, it didn't. All right, let's go. But yeah, no, since that's not going to be a thing uh, for just regular Proton, again, people on the Steam Deck would probably very much appreciate just having smoother, uh, even in brand new AAA games, just having a smoother um, game experience right out of the box, directly on the driver's side. That yeah, that's it, really I mean, cool. It, it's always that problem when you when you get into when you change areas in a game or you you boot it up and you yep. gotta like run oh, around yeah. in circles a little bit. Just get the chuggies all shorted out. Yeah, just. But I'm I'm completely guilty of like installing a game, running around a minute. Like you know what, I'm gonna come back and play this probably tomorrow when I can download it. Downloads all the shaders. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it, it gets. Oh, what? That's a ten megabyte up. No, that's shaders. Mm-hmm. No, right. <laughs> but uh, no, no, no such luck on the Nvidia side. Nvidia does this pretty quick already, though. So um, and games that will need to take advantage of fast linking pipelines in order to actually benefit from this boost. But it is getting upstreamed into uh, into Mesa. So that's all cool. This is very good. All right. Very good. Um, Pika Pika OS. 
n- not to Pokemon, uh, contrary to popular belief. But yeah, speak OS, if you've been on the internet lately and you've even had a cursory look at the distro news side of any uh, Linux publication, you've heard about Pika OS. It is uh, effectively Nobara, but instead of being Fedora-based, it's Ubuntu-based. Uh, it is, yeah, the, it, it's available for download. Uh, their website is uh, pikaos.ferreo.dev. So <laughs> go check it out, maybe, if you'd like. I did download it, and I fired up the uh, the live image. It worked. I uh, Gnome is the only option right now, so I kind of lost interest. <laughs> and I'm already running Nobara here, so I already know what I'm getting at. But yeah, Nobara does a lot of things right, so bringing that to a Ubuntu base, not not that terrible an option. Just Using the know-how choice. from Nobara, uh, Nobra, combined with Nobara. The- <laughs> okay, look, it's yeah. got a little bird. Oh, that's adorable. Uh, cute burb. See, there's your mm-hmm. uh, big feature right there. Open source drivers included. Out of the box. What's there not to love, Jordan? I mean, <laughs> if you, they're, they're literally just duplicating all the Nobara changes for Ubuntu. I kind of was hoping they would maybe go a little bit of a step further. Uh, but, you know, hey, people, want, people like the Nobara changes, and they're pretty solid when it comes to building a gaming rig. And if you don't want to just... Set set up them set it up yourself, adding the coppers or whatever. Then this sets this up and install for you. The one problem I have with these little specialty distributions is that they're very very fragile when changes to upstream do come. So you know your mileage may vary, but if you want the latest and greatest, and you don't mind some hiccups every now and then, give it a look. Learn to use Linux, kids. That's the moral of the story. So you don't have to deal with this, this kind of bullshit. Um, uh, uh, hot spicy unpopular opinion like fuck your gaming distributions give me hannah montana linux give me <laughs> Susie if you really hate yourself uh what was the first one that actually used wayland rebecca black linux something yeah right yeah i think yeah. it was that it was like default to wayland for the I longest give time a little bit of credit though you know me, like, okay you know, having the options to install Steam, Lutris, Goverlay, Mango Hut, Wine, Wine Tricks, VK Basalt, and like a bunch of other Linux gaming things and a nice little GUI right there that's good for the new user. I, I always say that with a big like shrug question mark inflection because like you, like the new users, like I, I want you to learn how to use Linux first, but hey, look, here's a Pika OS welcome screen. You can click on buttons and shit and they do stuff. Um, My biggest question, gentlemen. Why is LibreOffice turned into the, we're just going to fucking include this in everything, including gaming distributions by default people, for People what? are really attached to word processors and spreadsheets for some reason. It's not like Google Docs exists or Office 365 exists and you can do all this shit in a browser. Debian, you're guilty but, of this bullshit too. Like, yeah. I, I mean, like, <laughs> I, I, got, I got nothing against LibreOffice. Um, I use it. It's it's fine, yeah. but like yeah, it's not a core piece of software. By I don't stretch. think it should be based in solve for anything then, because like no. the very fraction of a percentile of a person <laughs> is using it, or like may, may, maybe Abby Word or something. Like I, I can see it for like a general purpose live CD where it's just like, hey, pop this in, see what kind of software is available, try it out, open some documents, blah blah blah. But like yeah, and for, it's for, not for, a light for, application either. No. But for yeah. <laughs> but for like a gaming centric distribution, mm-hmm. it really does seem that they're just like, and you can use this for other stuff too, other oh, than things no, for no, the I children know. No, to Pedro. justify to their parents Pedro. why they they want How Pico OS installed. No, uh, it just has a little Eve Online icon in it as it opens <laughs> up uh, the spreadsheet application. I mean, they already have Eve Online for Microsoft Excel. That's a thing already. So. That's probably a thing. It, no, it's it's straight up is. There's um, there's a plugin now. So I think like, the moral <laughs> of the story is Valve. Can you just rip and release Steam OS three? Oh yeah, yeah, that that would probably quell a lot of people's need well, for new distros. Here's what fix, I'm going to be fix doing, big gentlemen. Picture first, fix big picture on Nvidia. This then upcoming Steam week, um, hopefully this upcoming week, I'm going to take a couple of these distributions for live stream spins. We're going to install them. We're going to see if we can play some games on on Rectangle. Okay. We're going to see how these out-of-the-box experiences work. You'll probably get some people watching, yeah. <laughs> That's kind of the point, Pedro. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we, we want nobody to watch our Twitch I'm, <laughs> I'm while cooking rice on my 4090. <sighs> oh, it's, 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 we're back to rice, not chicken anymore? Okay. I want chicken <laughs> and rice. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> you could only have pioneers. Pioneer rice. Mm-mm-mm. 
Pioneers Out. There's a new version uh, released on the third of this month, and that screenshot looks pretty decent. That's all I'm going to say. A blender render of the new Koran uh, Tricks and its cockpits. So, yeah, there's uh, Tricks for your cockpits right there. There's a uh, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. That's Bernard Star Endgame, man. And that's a city. That's Seoul. It's Mexico City in the morning because the sun doesn't exist in the future. It's pretty dope. <laughs> it, blew, it blew up. We can't afford the sun anymore. <laughs> Pioneer's been in development for quite a while. 11 years in hiatus. Uh, the scout mission is back. Uh, special new ships. New things to play around. Oh, oh, look at this. This is a video, man. How? I mean, that looks good for a space sim type thing, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you, you yeah, basically yeah. just need a physics engine and yeah. Yeah. Some, the some HUD is not as cluttered as most uh, phys- uh Physics Sims, no. Space Sims. So, yeah. <laughs> and th- so, and if you don't if you don't know what Pioneer is, it's basically an open ended space fuck around simulator, elite, privateer, all that crop. Uh, get in your ship and do some stuff. Ooh, you can be a pirate. How much you will can you pay? Sell stuff. Metal creaking sound feedback under high acceleration. Well, the warp, the panels flutter differently at warp. I mean, it's it's cheap as free. It's open source. Bug fixes. Look at all this stuff, man. Like, a lot of bug fixes. <laughs> when did uh? <laughs> When was the last release, though? Yeah. Yeah, right. Um, <laughs> let's have a look. Let's scroll down. That's the, the current one, yes. Scroll oh, okay. Tw- oh, uh, hang on. Let's see the one before that. <laughs> that yeah. Uh, 2020. 20, okay. All right. All right. All right. So they're, 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 they're hacking on it, but, you know, you get 11 months of, uh, of no communication, and here are the results. Is there any space sims that you've ever gotten into? I played EVE Online briefly. I did, I did too, because they had like a official uh, Linux build that ran under Wine uh, when it was in open. They, they, uh, they had they they had a free trial, so I checked it out. And mm-hmm. yeah, uh, what was it called? X three. I still yeah. get emails from them, like EgoSoft, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I played a lot of X three because it ran really well on my laptop at the time. <laughs> So it's like, oh, we could just sit here and fly the spaceship and dock into space stations and not actually do any of the quests. Just fly I, around. Yeah. And that, <laughs> I wanted to get into Elite Dangerous, but that game fought me. Yeah, like, it no, fought me will, too, you, to the point that you, I told the support person, you know what? Just delete my account. I'll refund the game. It's fine. I got Goodbye. it for $5 on GMT, so that shit's not happening. Even remotely like that, I'll end up in like the like the surface craft, and I'm like, okay, I got this. We're going to take it slow, and like smash cut to eight seconds later, I'm upside down in a crater on fire. And I'm like, <laughs> well, that happened. Then I, I just, you know, I'm not smart enough for Kerbal Space Program, so I'm not going to try that. But hey, maybe you are more intelligent than me, and that's not saying too much, but go check it out. Pioneer Space Sim. Done it. All right, that does it for us. Coming up next, it's it's a little too real. We're doing <laughs> yeah, menial what? labor in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it's the end of the world as we know it. And we still got to work minimum wage jobs. We're throwing chairs at zombie admin. This is the chairquisition where we take a game, run it on a bunch of different Linux distributions on some pretty different hardware these days. And then we give you a uh, we give you a performance rating, a stack ranking based on one to four chairs. One chair means that you're fired. Four chairs means that you get a bonus. Uh, like I said, we're looking at zombie admin done by a hastily assembled, done on the Unity engine for about four ninety nine US or three ninety nine US. What is it? It's the zombie apocalypse, but you can't miss the workday. Scavenge for weapons, survive, and don't forget to restock the toner cartridges over at accounting. This humorous top-down shooter has you working your way up the corporate ladder, all the way to the rescue helicopter on the roof ca- rooftop. We gotta thank uh, Hastily Assembles for sending us some keys over Curator Connect. Now, let's get into the chair acquisition proper. Pedro, uh, I need you to come into my office and tell me how this ran on Novaro. <laughs> Last time I was in your office, something else happened, but uh, let's not talk about that. Over here on the desktop with the RX 6700 XE and the Ryzen 7 5800X3D, it can't really maintain 144 at 2560 by 1440 with oh, no. SMEA and everything cranked while recording. If I'm not recording, it holds 144 just smoothly, so all right. So uh, if you see the uh, the frame rate bouncing on the video, uh, blame OBS for that one. Uh, on the Steam Deck, though, since I wasn't recording there, it maintains uh, 60 FPS with the default settings, or 40 if you prefer to rock like that. Uh, works really, 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 <clears throat> I can say these words, Bless really, you. really well. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it doesn't allow uh, control or controller rebinding at all, but the arrow keys are mapped out of the box, so I will excuse it. Uh, the controller inputs on the deck also work just fine. The the dead zombies, they lose color, so they become like floor colored, which is a very clear visual indicator. It's like, that's not a threat anymore. You don't need to worry about it. I very much appreciated that. That was very, I very nice. for bugs when I step on them. <laughs> and the um the like that kind of immediate visual indication is always very good especially in a hectic game so very nice the uh pre-main menu music i really liked but once you get into the menu it becomes kind of meh uh and the little jingle while you're just running around in the halls and you're not surrounded by zombies that's also very nice i liked it as for the fun um well those were some fun 59 minutes. I'm only half joking. Uh, it's a fun game, but it's over very, very quickly. It took me 59 minutes, according to Steam, to 100% all 10 levels, I want to say. Eight levels, something like that. Eight uh, levels. Yeah, eight levels. And yeah, you can absolutely go back and replay the levels to get the Chivos, uh, but that's not going to be everyone's cup of zombie jam. Uh, it is... A fun game, but it's over quickly. And I suppose if it, if I were to compare it to the Starbucks Green Eye Cappuccino on price alone, the zombie admin would absolutely win. It's cheaper. It lasted me a lot longer than the aforementioned beverage. Uh, and even though it was over in about an hour, I I could still tell you know some interesting uh, bits about the mechanics. Like the more powerful weapon you pick up, the more Zambo spawn. Uh, if you have the sheer gall to pick up a minigun and finish a job in a very short period of time, you will die from the ensuing clusterfuckery. Uh, and the uh, the game will spawn undead co-workers from place that there is no other entry and you're standing in the doorway, but you looked away for like a second. The moment you look back, zombies have spawned behind you. That's some dickery. That Little said... Tables. Yeah. <laughs> that said, I didn't hate it. I wasn't satisfied. But I thoroughly enjoyed what I played. I guess, you know, leave them wanting more. Three chairs. <laughs> yeah, uh, so on Fedora 3764-bit, I only played this on the TV box with the uh, AMD FX 8150 with the RX 580. And lo and behold, uh, it holds 60 at UHD on that old-ass card. Uh, controls work out of the box and are sanely mapped. Um, the soundtrack is okay, and the color palette is pretty gray, grayish red for, um, uh, I guess it was the TV I was looking at, because this footage looks a little better. Um, but I would prefer a little bit more contrast. There's a couple bits of geometry that, like, don't really pop that you can get stuck on. That is a little annoying. And also, maybe, maybe like, a slightly better targeting reticule. You don't have the little crosshairs if you're playing with the controller. Or if you're being a little cheater, cheater, McCheater place like uh, Pedro, then, uh, yeah, you get a nice little mouse uh, that you can point at things. Um... Otherwise, everything is pretty clear, although with couch co-op, um, your character has red hair and player two has blue hair. It's a little it's a little easy to get character blind. Uh, just just the thing. Fun wise, while I'm not a super elite zombie killer like Pedro, I figure I can get through this game in under two hours. You can zoom through the first four levels in about 30 minutes. And then uh, Ven alluded in the in between segment to the difficulty hockey stick. But yeah, um, it doesn't actually take that long. You could probably get through it if you're not trying to 100% it. Um, run around, do odd temp work while chugging coffee and trying not to piss yourself it is the delicate balance because you know you got to take everything takes the precious time and you got to balance keeping uh your bladder empty with doing the work with your ammunition uh with all the zombie spawning uh and having a full bladder makes things go slowly but i don't think it's worth it to actually go urinate because those bathrooms are death traps with only one in ingress or egress so you will get swarmed real quickly some of the chores are pretty funny, though. Like, it, it's a comedy game with some decent writing. Or at least, the, at the very least, the writer spares us their, uh, their const constantly exposing us to their wit, Pedro. Um, it's, it's tossed in here and there to great effect. And I think, yeah, le less is more. Uh, the Zombo AI is pretty consistent. Uh, they'll chase you as long as they have line of sight. Once you break that, they ignore you, which is pretty good. You can take advantage of it. Uh, and yeah, the couch co-op. Uh, it's there, and it's fun, but god, god damn it, add some multiplayer. Uh, the spawn rate is a lot more aggressive with two players, so there is an adequate challenge. And you can lose player two, so if you tear off, if one of you tears off, uh, you will lose the other one, and then you will very quickly die. 
Um, yeah, so like I said, if you're not super elite and you didn't 100% levels immediately, there isn't really much replay value for going back and trying to do the challenges unless you really, really like the game. I would like to see a much more expanded version of this with more weapons, more levels, maybe a few more mechanics like a dodge or something, and online multiplayer. We'll give it three. <laughs> Three cheers. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's talk about how it ran over here on Debian soon to be um, 12. Uh, Debian testing called the bookworm on an AMD 1920X, 32 gig digital RAM, NVIDIA 3060 powered box of business, man. Everything ran out of the box, and that's neat to see. I still love seeing that. It still shocks me a little bit in this day and age. Uh, it is locked at 60, but hey, I can live with that. I, I should say locked to VSync, whatever you want to do. Um, actually. Using about 35% of the 3060 to maintain that 60 at 2160p, aka consumer 4K. Soundtrack's pretty decent, man. I like the pulp surf rock footy fiction soundtrack with that little side of like whimsical. I had a good time with it. And it's good background music. It's good to slay zombies too. And shot damn, ladies and gentlemen. That shotgun sound, right? That yep. like, mmm, mmm, give me some more of that. Oh, that, that tingles me in all the right places. Let's talk about the fun, because what is it? At the end of the day, take that shot, man. Uh, this is a twin stick shooty pew pew. But it's a relatable twin stick shooty pew pew. I mean, the opening scene of this game, your boss calls to make sure that although he's fully aware there's a zombie apocalypse that just broke the fuck out, that you can still make it into work. And I'm like, oh, too real, too real, you know? Because that's, <laughs> that's going to hit some of you just like right in the field. You're like, oh, I've been there. What do you do? You drink Java, you take the piss, and you spend about 95% of your time running around doing tasks way outside of your job description. Again, one of those feels, right? Uh, so, did I mention the zombie apocalypse? Because that's where the shooty pew pew comes in. Now, you have to shuck and jive around the zombies while completing, you know, these tasks. Fix the copier, you know, the phones and all that. And it's pretty basic. Some things can get really, really get in the way of, like, with the zombies because you don't have the ability to, like, Doge rule. No way to get it right. You just got to run around them and hope they don't get you pinned in a bathroom, which is always fun to get through. Um, you run out of gun food, you just run. Like, fuck, you don't have option B. You don't end up like a pea shooter to kind of get out. You just hope. You hope. And you can only use whatever gun you have at the time. And that quickly becomes enemy number two in this game. The shotgun just fucking works. The assault rifle, when you absolutely positively again that just works the smg is a pox upon the earth avoid it with its three it's shots of, sense of bullshit <laughs> that, do, 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 that thing's killed me so many times don't take the bait just keep on going around and the big kicker though the big kicker is that flying spaghetti monster damn minigun because you see it the first time and you squeeze a little bit and you run up to it and you pick it up you're like this is gonna be fucking fun then the tsunami starts. I'm like, oh, that's good of them. That's nice of the developers. They're giving me a bunch of extra zombies to slay with my minigun for the first time. This is novel. Thanks, guys. This is a, when's this uh, tsunami going to stop? No, no. Is that click, click? I'm out of bugs. Okay. You know what? Maybe this night. Hey, look, there's another minigun I ran across. I'll just, this one won't be. Oh, here comes the tsunami again. Completely. Completely takes all the fun out of the minigun. You just have to avoid it because as soon as you pick it up, everybody from everywhere just comes right at you. Sucks all the fun out of it. However, however, this game's four dollars, so you can just buy it for any of the like slightly interesting, mildly moderately entertaining things that I just said about it, and you won't feel bad, not at all. Now, I think maybe if we had a gun inventory and some dodge, that spice things up a little bit. I'd like that, just saying personally, and uh, you know. Maybe look into it because I have one of the big things with me is not being able to swap out guns. That's the one time I stopped, went to the controls, and I had a look. I rummaged around, like, can I do it? I was like, no, you can't. Maybe that's what makes the game what it is. Uh, so that's why this rando on the internet thinks that uh, your first DLC should include that, <laughs> along with, hear me out, a full engine overhaul making uh, zombie admin 3D and fully path traced. That's right. We need uh, zombie lights or something like that. 
like first person and third person shooter. That'd be really nice. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Or or you could just top it, toss in some actual functioning online multiplayer. Whatever's easier. Whatever's easier. Also, uh, what's up with the hockey stick difficulty level on the R and D? Uh, what is yeah. it? Level four. Yeah, where, where the game goes to fuck around casual to get good scrubble yeah, all of a level sudden. Three. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's the one I keep dying right. All right, there. all right. Yeah, that one. That one <laughs> took me a minute to get through. Uh, but hey, you guys. You do you. However you want to roll with this. This is a two-chair game, but, you know, it gets three because of the price. And you made me give a damn about the clapped-out genre of Twick, Twick, uh, Twin Stick Shooters. Uh, you made it John entertaining Twick. for me. John Twick. <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, you know, I feel comfortable saying, you know, for four bucks, three ninety-nine. yeah, just go ahead and grab it. Like, I'll, you can, you can get like- an hour of entertainment out of this, right? Yeah, I do like how the run, like the running zombies, like Naruto run, which is pretty fucking yeah. funny. Um, yeah, and just like all, all, all the writing, all the all the general tasks, give, give, they give you a good chuckle. It's like, yep, yep, yep. It's too real. It's too mm. fucking real. As you go through all the departments, it's just like playing playing with my accountant wife. It's like get through the accounting levels. It's like, man, accounts are the fucking worst, right? <laughs> <laughs> I had fun with it. Um, yeah, just uh, that'd be. I understand it. Yeah, you don't go to the Unity Asset Store and download multiplayer, but you get what I'm saying, man. Like, it it, it needs some real bad, yeah, yeah, and and more levels, maybe, maybe yeah. even like even maybe like just like a RNG like roguelike type thing, just, or yeah. since you know spoilers, once you get to the ending, you, you you're not allowed on the helicopter because that's for you know corporate use only. Uh, so you have to go back. Let us play the levels back. Just change some oh, things like, around. Uh, just go, yeah. go, go, go. Uh, what was it? Je- Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde for the NES, where you had to like go to one side as Doctor Jekyll, and then on the way back as Mister Hyde. Some shit yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All, right. All right. Well, coming up next, we talk about uh, hardcore punk bands and Trackmania. Wait, uh, do, do you think the electronic straws have fail open or fail closed? <laughs> I think it's fell close because it's it's going to be some proprietary bullshit. But yeah, if you uh, would like an electronic straw of your own, well, it's not available on store.linuxgamecast.com, but it should be Why not? very soon. Right? <laughs> then, fuck right. it up. Dude, um, we, all the R&Ds in the egg straw, man. <laughs> right. You just, you just got to fight through this horde of zombies to get to it. Yeah, no, the extra took up all of the R and D budget, so now we can create the E straw. Do you have any crash test dummies have been sacrificed to perfect this device? Not enough. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no. If you'd like to get in touch and let us know uh, that we're not making any sense, and the amount of bullshit that happens in between segments doesn't really translate well to uh, ac- the actual segments, go to LinuxGameCast.com, hit the contact button. And there's a form you gotta fill. If you skip the caveats and then your thing doesn't go through, that's on you. <laughs> okay. What a shame. Cool. See, I'm, I'm at the point right now of like genuinely going for like no original ideas. <laughs> so I'm on Google looking. <laughs> <laughs> like just maybe. L- 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 just send us a lorem ipsum. We'll, we'll read. We'll read the entire thing. I, yeah, like the entire thing. No repeated I mean, words. Think about it. <laughs> egg straw. 100% egg. That just looks like pasta. <laughs> yeah, whatever. All right, let's talk about convergence. Uh, we bring this up from time to time on the show because we all want the device. We've all been promised this future for about mm-hmm. 20 plus years in commercials and other types of ads where you get home, you throw your mobile device down, it auto syncs, and all, the, all your, your walls turn into television screens and everything you wave your hands around and like i don't know extra show up it's gonna be brilliant test man writes in says hey is it safe to assume that the personal computer quote unquote in the future will be just a phone that's connected to displays and some other peripherals question mark so-called mobile convergence and in order to do something that requires more processing power you will remotely connect to your home lab or some rented server Similar to how mainframes and terminals uh, worked at the time. It's a flat circle, man. Man. Uh, now explain man. to me why I'm mistaken. I because mean, by that time, you, you're already carrying around. A high-end mobile phone is already a supercomputer in your pocket. You don't need to rent terminal space when you... Well, 
and like the, the, this idea isn't original, right? Like you're, you're not, you're not the first, sorry, test man. You're not the first person to come How up. How dare you? This. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but yeah, t- talking about, uh, old mainframes and how, yeah, we, we've kind of circled, circled back to time sharing via say the cloud, as opposed to just a single mainframe. Well, think about like uh, X windows. Yeah. X, X server. X- it, yeah. yeah, it used to be. It, it used to be. You you would connect to a single a single host. X still has support for multi seat. Uh, my former boss Chris Tyler has an entire blog post series on how to set up in game on multi seat Linux. Um, <laughs> so you you're are saying com- X can still give it to you? X can still give it to you. Yep. But yeah, like um, <laughs> I, I, I don't I don't know. I think I think as powerful as your phone is, you're still going to need some more graphical horsepower. And yeah, you we would all love like. The, the tablet you could plop down into the eGPU and it just streams to your TV and blah 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 and, and you know it it may happen. Well, no, Jordan, uh, what are you gonna say when when they come up with like E E P C E P C I E? Oh yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it's, the, the, it's the laser six connector, right? Like, uh, but and and but that's the thing though. For for some stuff, we're seeing that like cloud really doesn't cut it um or we're, we're not at a level of like network advancement where cloud can cut it look at stadia and well what stuff if it's like a that. server in your house though well if, it, if it's a server in your house that's a little different you're it's, not, it's, it's, it's still cloud kind of yep. <laughs> yes it's, it's, it's an it's, internal it's, cloud i mean you a, can put a, a personal it, cloud you, you can put but, it on a different vlan if it makes you happy I will. I'll, I'll just make all the VLANs. <laughs> every host will be on its VLAN, so I have to route everything to everything else. Fuck later, but too. The midterm in between what Ven was saying of just dumping your phone on the desk and it does everything wirelessly and it charges the phone, it does whatever. The in betweeny point is something like what Testman describes. You have uh, a dock, a Thunderbolt or, you know, stupidly fast USB C dock connected to an external uh, GPU that also happens to have maybe a couple of hard drives, maybe a few SSDs, uh, and your phone that was working in like stupid power save mode so you could carry it around now is unlocked. Or Cooling even, or even, would still be an issue, but yeah. <laughs> or or even, even just additional supplementary CPUs, like the, the sky's the limit. Uh, but like, again, I, I, again, I don't think, uh, for, for everything, uh, that that'll be like completely possible at least until we start getting like really good fiber penetration, basically everywhere. Well, I don't um, think cooling is going to be, um, too much of an issue because, uh, they were showing that off at CES, uh, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to introduce you to wiggle cooling. The, 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 I saw the, that, the that straw. one, that will make, that will make phones stupid powerful if they can get it off it uh it already works like they, they've implemented it and they have uh people that are backing it uh air jets uh solid state wiggle coolers tomorrow's laptops uh, mobile devices yeah it just it, it wiggles and makes some air yeah. oh. so so you so you know may, maybe right like it's everything's impossible until someone invents a way to do it right that's yeah. that's yeah. scientific progress, but i like so. that like i like that idea of the convergence of yeah you have your computer in your pocket and then you get home you plug it into a dock single boom. point of failure what about when oh, it's in yeah. your brain man what, what if you can just plug <laughs> into the matrix man bluetooth isn't reliable in 2023 what if what i'm if not we can worried just, like, about brain escape the simulation and install our games on the universe yeah what, what if you could have like you could like dual wield extras. I mean, you can. You just need. You're, you're just going to cause a lot of burns in the process. There are still straws. So yeah, probably. It, oh, dude, it, it had a directional switch on it too. You can go from suck to blow. Suck, oh, suck, it's only a suck, suck or blow suck, straw. Suck, suck, suck. It, it's not. It's not bidirectional. You got. You got to configure it one way uh, or the other. You got to pay extra, man. It's optional. Uh, it's like the under. Really? Uh, there we go. That that's an idea for the e straw. You just, just have a very complex system of valves. <laughs> I mean, you also like the racing stripes, not free either. It's uh, yeah. <laughs> you don't want a slow extra. <laughs> you, you can get the the one with the red stripe. That's RGB the fastest. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, a game that came out, we were all kind of a, not we, I, singular, uh, myself, Jill, and uh, the rest of the Filthy Casuals were excited to see finally show up on Steam. Was Trackmania 2020, Ubisoft being Ubisoft, waited until 2023 to drop it. But Michael, I made a little thing, I'm like, hey, this, you got you to do some messing around, playing around to get it up and working on your Steam Deck. Which yeah, you Mike, Mike, Michael asks, oh yeah. 
Um, I don't get the error you're showing. I get Ubisoft Connect is not currently installed. I watched the other guides on how to install Ubisoft Connect, but I still can't launch from Steam. Can I launch from Ubisoft Connect, but get a driver? Or I can launch from Ubisoft Connect, but I can get a driver error. So. How do you fix this? Pedro? Uh, I don't know. Um, okay, so from experience, uh, the Ubisoft games that install Ubisoft Connect, they install automatically. So if yours didn't, you need to uninstall the game, make sure you delete whatever prefix it created in the compact data folder, and just start fresh. Because if it's not installing properly, you done goofed. <laughs> so what Pedro meant to say is eggs. you need to go to step five in the guide that I posted on our web zone, because what you're missing is Steamworks. <laughs> it ain't doing a fuck mothering thing unless you got Steamworks installed, to which I went, huh, really? Is that an actual problem? Yes, it is. Ask Rectangle. Jordan's I box, because I tried to install <laughs> Trackmania 2020 on it last night, and it went, get wrecked, old man. And I'm like, well, what's going on here? Why don't you do the thing? I run into, like, another post from another post. It's like, do you have Steamworks installed? Like, it should just do that automatically. No, sure. it's not installed. Here, click. That's the, that's the install. problem with the Then I rerun the installer, too. and guess what it does, Pedro? Picks yeah, everything the, up, sets it up, installs yeah. it. But that's the thing, Steamworks, uh, it gets pulled automatically if you install any of the Valve games. Mm, Valve games? <laughs> maybe. Well, I didn't have any Valve games Valve installed, game, yeah. right. Probably, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it, it's it's a problem in Steam, like, uh, again, the EAC Proton Runtime. Uh, that doesn't get installed automatically by a lot of games, too, that need it. Uh, so, Elden uh, Ring pulls it automatically, but there's a bunch of others that don't. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I mean, I didn't have a problem on uh, Threadbooper, but on this box, which just had, you know. Well, yeah, we, we played uh, half literally just the one last game. Week, so, <laughs> yeah, makes sense. So, there you go. There's your pro tip. Get out there, go play some games. It's a great time to be playing on Linux. It's super easy and it's relatively straightforward compared to what it used to be. Yeah. That's very nice. Gotta install two wines. <laughs> two wines, two straws, five dudes. Ladies and gentlemen, on that bombshell, we're going to bounce out of here. You can always catch us kicking off at 8.30 Eastern Standard Time right here on Twitch. An hour beforehand, if you're one of the gorgeous, super hot, super sexy patrons that back us over at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast, see how our sausage is made in the pre-pre-super shows. And an hour before, hop into Discord, give us a listen, give us a chat. If you want to get in touch with me, I'm at Vin Stone on the Twitter nets. Or just at Vin. Over at mass.linuxgamecast.com. Or scream at me in the Discord, IRC, Twitch chat, wherever. I'm easy to get a hold to. Five dudes, two straws? More likely than you think. You can find me talking about this subject on Twitter at the Burning Fool, on Mastodon at froja.mass.lexcamecast.com. Yeah. But all this time, me saying up late or early into Sunday, uh, as the case may be, I we never... We call it Merly. I, I never really picked up on the whole... I'm easy. I'm easy like Sunday morning, because it is. Uh, <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, uh, Elon Net, just at an account at F O U R. Just follow me there. <laughs> uh, that, that's watch uh, last. Oh shit! I don't know what the credits are going to be. I just mm, all right. This is the button. <laughs> as, as we all tab. Is, oh, is that is that L W D W? That yep. Yep, all the little credits. He he he. Shut up, Joe. <laughs> no, never. I'm I'm gonna go buy more pink penguin stuff. We gotta thank our advisors. Our <laughs> guess Arthur. And the names are still the fucking yeah, same. Yeah, the names are Executive the same. producers: yep. Barbara, Scott, Michonne, I think G, Mike T, uh, Drummer, our little Licky fan, Super Destro. Little Licky. Oh no. Little, little, little Licky, Licky and our sea monsters. <laughs> Renaud uh, look. LePage, the L stands for Licky, Ryder X Mark Dead. So fast. <laughs> Death Can't read Stephen them all. Jill, Benjamin Doom to that one, Stephen B, Dirty Dean. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so fast. Good luck. <laughs> Keep being awesome. Thank you for episode. I, what numbers is this supposed to be? Four, five, four, five, 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 four, four, five, five six. Four, five, four, yes. Five, four, six. Okay. The <laughs> thing that is directly at the upper left hand side of the show notes we're all looking at. <laughs> Linux Gamecast LWDW, baby. Oh, Dynafire, everybody. <laughs> um, we'll see you next week. Pedro, hold up your Steam controller thing so I can get a screenshot. Uh, I can hold up both. I don't <laughs> care. Pick one. Other one. Okay. Five dudes. <laughs>